and I did this recording, so uh, I got it yeah, myself, but it's okay. They all got phone calls. I was doing yeah. this recording, and I hear Fana Anderson, her voice. It's like, Rabbi, this was the best <laughs> class we <we've> ever had. <laughs> <laughs> And thank you for so many of you for coming last night to the Rosh Chodesh event. Some of us are wearing our, raise your hand if you're wearing your bracelet that you made last night. Isn't that gorgeous? It's gorgeous. We, so, so Jill Stark taught us a little bit about the different stones we got to choose. So the first set of stones, I can't remember the name, maybe you remember, Soda light, and it was like it calms you down, it helps you sleep. I'm like, sign me up. <laughs> so I'm feeling very strong. <laughs> That's the one you picked up. So, so, so pretty. I know. Okay, so hi. Hi, Tammy. This is yeah, I miss I like it's like been two weeks that I haven't seen some of you. So I'm like, hi. Oh, there's always next to Rosh Chodesh, right? We do it every month. Julie, let me know if the camera is good to go. Are we, are you? Hi, Joyce. Hey, Joyce, how you doing? Good to see you. Um, are we ready over here? Julie, 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 is this good to go? Good to go, okay. Maybe, maybe just to see who's on, maybe we could. Um, put it on gallery. Oh, know? okay, sure. Just That's a great I idea. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so just to recap a little bit, because I taught two weeks ago. Oh, by the way, big shout out. We have we have some new people in this room right now. It's Barbara, you said, right? Not, okay, well, Gloria. Gloria, this is Gloria's first, very, very first time in L'Chaim. Woo! Welcome, and we hope this will be the first of many, many times. You're always welcome here. And welcome back to Susan, who hasn't been here for a couple of years. So it's really, really nice to, I, I told Gloria, I'm like, wow, this is so exciting. Now, you know, I, like, I feel like I could show you around. Like, usually everyone's like, we'll tell you what's been done. But it's so nice to meet someone that's new, new, new. Okay, so a little recap. And I, what I want to do for the recap is ask, ladies, the ones that have been here, two weeks ago, we spoke about judging people favorably. And I, we spoke about so many beautiful ideas. I'd like to hear if anyone took a takeaway from that class. Was there something, I'll tell you, one of my takeaways was that every single day, I want to ask myself, who did I judge favorably today? Okay, so that's kind of just my little takeaway, like it has to be done and we're judging all day, every day. So who, one person every day, that's a score. So was there one takeaway that anyone wants to remember if anyone has notes? Yes, Paula. Oh, love it, love it. Yes, we, we were seeing how we're walking into a story. We're seeing someone, we're meeting someone in chapter don't know where they've been we don't know where they're going a little you know a little free okay thank you paula anyone else yes I 
Amazing. Anyone else want a, a little something that they learned or took away? Okay, let's go to the. Do you want it? Yeah. 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 You've been working that muscle, really, right? Wow, wow. That's amazing. Like you kind of see yourself changing, right? The more you're, you're like throwing yourself in the ring and working at this, amazing. Thank you, Laura. Thank you all of you for, for incredible feedback. Now let's go to next. The next. Judging for the, giving the benefit of the doubt, judging favorably. Okay. And Amitepha, one of the, principles, one of the, one of the mitzvot in the Torah to give rebuke in the proper way. That was last week's class. You were here for that. Any takeaways on that? If you were here, if you want to share, because for those of you who weren't here, I think we should all like get up to date. So I think Gadi spoke about how to give rebu rebuke in a sensitive way. It has to be done privately. It has to be done properly. The mitzvah of not carrying hatred in your heart. What do you do with this resentment, with this the feelings, the anger, the frustration? What do you do with that? You have to put it down somewhere. You don't want to drag that through your life. That's not, you're the one, it's almost like poison. You are holding the poison inside of you. So last week, Gaddy spoke about how to do it in a calm manner, in a sensitive manner, privately, giving someone the opportunity to explain themselves. Fill, fill me in what else I missed. Um, there was like acceptance, right? Like acceptance, it's not even so much about the person in front of you that harmed you. It's more about finding peace in your own heart, acceptance so that you can move on, okay? And it's a mitzvah, it's a mitzvah. But this is a very complicated mitzvah. I'm not sure how much Gadi went into the other side of it because the flip side is if you do it wrong, you blow it. In fact, for the men that are going on the retreat this weekend, Gadi's giving a lot of great sessions. And one of them is how to tell someone off and not blow it. So he'll speak about some of these concepts because we blow it all the time. So now we're going to go into the next part of loving our fellow as we love ourselves. This chapter that we're doing on, on working on our interpersonal relationships. And this is one of the most discussed, taught about, written about, debated, learned 
conversations within Judaism. It's always been, there is so much written about it in the Torah. I'm gonna to read you a few different quotes from Proverbs, from Tehillim, but all of it came together in a very easy to use format pre-World War II. Does anyone recognize this man? The Chafetz Chaim, okay? And um, everyone knows him as the Chafetz Chaim, but that's not actually his name. Does anyone remember? I have this, like blanked on it. Do you remember it? Um, someone look it up for me? Yeah? Rabbi Google, tell no. The Chafetz Chaim, was a, a very simple man, a pious man. He had a job, he had a store. He learned every second of the day when he wasn't working and earning a living to, 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 you know, to uh, raise his family. And his mission was to bring the laws of speech to the world in a way that everyone could bring it into their own lives. And there are so many the countless books written on the laws of speech and that all started with him. Okay. No, no internet connection? Oh, oh something with Cohen. Yeah. International. Okay. Yisrael Mayor. Yisrael Mayor Cohen. Kagan. Kagan. Yisrael Mayor Kagan. No, it's the Chofet Chayim. Good, to choose life. Chafetz is to search, Chayim life. He, and here is the very famous quote, one of the very famous quotes. This is from the book of Psalms. Mi ha'ish ha'chafetz Chayim. You wanna know what the magical elixir is, the special potion for a long, beautiful life? Who is that person that's searching and desires life? Ohev yamim lirot tov. He loves days and he sees only the good. Who is this person that desires life and looks for the good? Okay, so here it is. Here is the, here is, here it is. Nitzor leshon chamera, guard your tongue from evil. Usfatecha medaber mirma, and your lips from speaking deceitfully. Sur meira, turn from evil, the ase tov, and do good. Vakesh shalom veradfehu. Seek peace and pursue it. Okay? Who is this man that desires life and loves days that he only sees good? The one that guards his tongue from evil and his lips from speaking deceitfully. Turn from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. Okay? Prophet Chaim. He's named for those words. Seeking life. Now, <laughs> The first time Lashon Hara, the laws of speech are something that I have learned since I was a young kid, but it was in seventh grade, which I was in Canada. So we call it grade seven. That's okay. If anyone, any Canadians here in grade seven, that's like a total Canadian thing. Grade seven, I had an experience that I cannot shake as much therapy as I do, as much experience as much as I grow up, I'm 41 almost, and I'm still back in seventh grade in the bathroom, ditching school, okay, supposed to be in class, but I was hanging out in the bathroom, taking my time with another girl, and we were chatting, chit, 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 right? I don't know what we were talking about. It was nothing important. It was, but we were chatting, and we got on the topic of another girl in our class, and we were talking badly about her. And I had nothing in my heart against this girl. It was just boredom. It was pure boredom. But I will never forget where we heard flush and oh. out came that girl. Wow. And as much as, as an adult, Arab Yom Kippur, I have called her so many times to get to ask Mechila forgiveness. I still feel terrible. I was not a mean kid. I was just, just. Sometimes it, is, it doesn't, doesn't come from such an evil place. We're just bored. We just don't know. We're just, I don't know. We'll give reasons why we do these things. Well, teenagers, okay, I was a kid. I was seventh grade, right? But still, till this day, I cannot shake it to see her face. She was red in the face 
And when someone becomes red in the face, Gadi spoke about this last time, last week, right? Redness, embarrassment is almost like murdering someone. I feel like I killed her. I killed something in her. And, and I can't shake it. So my rabbi, Rabbi Yitzhak Berkowitz, he says, nothing you could say is more powerful than remaining silent. Nothing you could say is more powerful. So we're gonna talk about silence. We're gonna talk about using our mouth for good and not for bad. There's a lot, there are a, quite a few um, prohibitions against our speech. Okay, so the one that we just started talking about is gossip. Everyone knows gossip is bad. It, it destroys worlds. It's terrible. There's nothing productive that comes out of it. Does anyone know another prohibition that has to do with our speech? Okay, so lying. So in this, in this context, we could talk of only to bring peace. So let's put that aside for now, because that does come up in relationships and there's space to have a white line, not, not a real big line. No, so no, no, that's, that's completely forbidden. But we're not gonna go into that now. Yeah. That would be a good thing, right? She's saying to speak up in defense of somebody. Yeah, totally. Okay, so we're, okay, hold, hold on to that. That is something we're going to speak about, okay? Okay, so Deborah is saying there's a power in remaining silent in the moment of being embarrassed. So that is actually a very big concept. We're going to talk about that. So hold on to that because I want you to all remind me there's a lot, there's a lot of different balls that we're going to put up in the air right now. Any other prohibition? Yes. Mm. Ooh, okay. I really like what you're saying because I don't, I wasn't planning on talking about it today, but another part of building our character and in working in relationships is not to use flattery. Flattery is a disgusting trait in God's eyes. Okay. So we will talk about that, but probably we won't get to it today, but I love what you said. Thank you for that. Anything else? Throw it out. I mean, we, we you can't be wrong. Ah, okay. Um, what do you guys think? Weigh in, <laughs> weigh in on that. Do we need to defend? Is that Lashon Hara? Okay, like if there's there's three people involved in gossip. Okay, there is the person that's speaking it, there is the person that's listening to it, and the person that's being spoken about. So you're saying the person that's listening to it that he has the opportunity to stop it in its tracks. He does, he does. So he is part of the Lashon Hara circle. And our sages tell us that when someone gossips, these three people are killed. Why is that? Obviously the person that is speaking the gossip, she is losing her status in the eyes of anyone she's speaking to. If someone gossips to me, in my mind, I'm thinking, well, I'm not going to share anything personal with her because I'll be the next person she's going to gossip. Yeah. yeah, no, it totally kills her, like her status in my eyes. I don't want to have gossip friends. None of us want to, because we all know that that's not who we want to surround ourselves with. So that's, that's the person that is speaking the gossip. We all distance ourselves somewhat. So they have killed themselves socially in everyone's eyes. Now, the person that is being spoken about, so it's very, very clear. Why are they being killed? Why are they considered killed? Their reputation, right? Uh, who knows what the gossip was about? It could destroy marriages. It could destroy businesses, parnasa, livelihood, children, everything. Their whole social status, communities. Everything could be broken down, destroyed. So destructive. And then the one that is listening, as you said, there would be no gossip if not for that individual. So that person is a huge stakeholder in this, in this dynamic. 
okay? And we talk about what is that person, right? Because what, what Marilyn is saying is, is that person responsible? If, if, if you overhear something, what are you supposed to do? Deborah, I'm sure you could come up with crazy ideas. Like, what are you supposed to do? It's like, put your fingers in your ears. No, 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 no. <laughs> right? That's, that's, that's also kind of. Okay, so let's just, before we move on, let's just talk strategies for a minute, okay? So everyone, please give some ideas. Walk away, okay? That takes a lot of strength, okay? Especially if it's really juicy. Especially if it's really juicy. I had a friend that used to come over Sunday mornings when I was a child. Okay, it was it was like bagels and locks and what's the latest? Oh, yeah. Did you do you want to hear the lowdown? They don't call it lowdown for nothing. Low down, yeah. like it's gossip, yeah. right? We all know it's very destructive, but it's very hard to walk away from that because we're curious, we're human beings, we want to know, we're social. And also going back to me in seventh grade, we're bored. Honestly, if we filled our life with goodness, we wouldn't have time to be talking about other people. I'm sorry to say, let me give you a little um, a quote that I saw. Great minds discuss ideas. Average minds discuss events. Small minds discuss people. Okay, so great minds discuss ideas. Well, flattery is very despised in God's eyes. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> we'll talk about that another time. Great minds discuss ideas. Average minds discuss events. Small minds discuss people. We, we, I don't know, I don't know who wrote that. Small minds discuss people. We really need to stop ourselves in the moment. Like, it, like I remember those Sunday mornings, there was nothing else to do. There was nothing, it was bagels and locks and people and lots of time. And I used to hate Sundays because they were so unproductive. It was just so much sitting around and yenting and nothing productive came out of it. No one feels good walking away from an hour spent like that. Okay, yeah, idea. Um, I think walking away is fine. Yeah. And it's probably, yeah. Nobody, unless you make it. Why you walking away? I uh, so I sorry I can't I can't listen to this. be like oh, she's Jesus. so religious I say she I, is on her spiritual high and they're offended I know I get that right so here this goes back to last class how to give rebuke it has to be sandwiched on top and underneath it with love so much love I love you so much and I really want to hear but I want you to help me because I'm working right now on not gossiping and this is the hardest thing for me because I could be such a gossip so if you could help me, I'm doing this challenge. I'm challenging myself to get through a whole day of not gossiping. So could you, could you stop right here? Because it's so tempting to me. Then it doesn't sound so threatening, right? We could build it up and be like, give me a hug. I love you. You're thank you for helping me. And so you know, I'm just throwing out an idea. I'm I'm ready to be discarded. I, I mean, I you don't care at this point. I'm at, I'm at the point in my life where <laughs> just like you, know, you, you do you accept that about me. I'm yeah, sorry. I love that. I love that about you. But most people are not where you are at. And most people are not ready to, to sacrifice a relationship to do the right thing. I'm just saying yeah. you're at a high level. You've been learning for a long time. I, I, don't, I don't even think I'm able to do that. 
I don't think so. It's so hard in the moment when you're like debating in your head, like, wait, should I be hearing this? Should I not be hearing this? There's also the, there's a Hebrew word called lito elet, which means for constructive purposes. So sometimes I have to hear something because I need to know for work, for my kid, for this, for that. A kid comes home and I say, mommy, someone bullied me. And I, I'll say to Shalom, my youngest, I'll say, who did that? You better tell me. I'm going to I'm going to call your teacher. And he'll say to me, I can't tell you. It's mm -hmm. Lashon Hara. Like, you better tell me. <laughs> better tell me. And I'm like, and I teach him that I need to know because I need to help you. So we, it's so complicated that that's why we have so many books on this. What is considered constructive? What is considered not okay? And then we have another part of Lashon Hara. If I could, you want to, the, the other part that the word that I was looking for, um, Susie, when I said Lashon Hara, and what are all the other things forbidden speech? So Rachilut, okay? And how do, it means to be a tail bearer, right? It means to hear something and be like a peddler a peddler with its wares, you take that information and then you pass it on. It's it's a much worse kind of Lashon Hara because it keeps going. It's like, you know, you're, you're taking it to the next town. Imagine like the, the merchant that used to go from town to town, he would bring gossip, he would bring news. So you want to be that. So there's, we'll try to talk a little bit about that. Okay, Deborah, what did you want to say? Because I knew that right. Um, yeah. Yeah, I know. Okay. So So I, I want to I want to give you a little fizzle, a little strength for you guys that shared how much how far you go to prevent gossip. Okay, and this is a quote said by the Vilna Gaon, the greatest man of I think he was from the 1600s, giant genius Torah scholar, the Vilna Gaon. I've quoted him before. He this is a conversation. It's actually a letter that he wrote to his wife. It's mind blowing. He says. For every moment that a person refrains from forbidden speech, he gains this hidden light that no angel can contain. It is so big by refraining, by staying silent in the moment, or by pulling yourself away, or making an excuse, or not going to the gossipy lunch, whatever it is, the, the I mean, we're talking angels, like, they could never come close to the light that will be given to you. Unbelievable. Okay. Okay. Again, again, for every moment that a person refrains from forbidden speech, he gains the hidden light that no angel can contain. There's something so tremendous because we're not angels. It's so hard for us. And, and God compares us to the angels that were on a higher level. The light that we get in that moment is tremendous. So let's talk, oh, do, you, do you have a question? It's so beautiful. It's, Marcy, that's why everyone wants to be your friend. I'm serious. I'm serious. No, it is such a, it, I mean, think about it. Like that is the biggest gift you could ever give a person by saying, I just don't gossip. But they, like, if, well, you do it. You do it. You're not gossiping with her. Like just dropping a little drop, like putting something down, she will be like thinking about that all day, all week. It, it really, she won't get it, right? I think there has to be a little bit of infrastructure. It's also, there's a personality dynamic, there's a social circle dynamic, like it, it's complex. So it's not so simple, but I'm just saying you be you, 
drop seeds, first of all, your kids, your family, your friends, your community, everyone sees who you're all about. It's a why does she keep at it? She's right. So maybe, maybe like, you know, some of the ways that we've discussed to drop a little, like a little, you know, like like she starts talking about someone and you suggest, like, let's change the topic. I don't I don't like talking about people. Right. Right. Yeah. Right, right, right. Sensitively, just just think think about last class. Sensitively, privately, one on one, with a lot of love, like all that Gaddy spoke about how to give review, but but you you also have a responsibility. If you love your fellow as you love yourself, like, wouldn't you want to know if you did something wrong? I know, I know. So just try to put yourself in her shoes. I know it takes a lot of humility. It's very hard. I, I get this all the time. If I'm here, I'm going to rotate it. Okay? So I'll see Gaddy, did you hear? Like, I, I don't know. I'll be like telling him about something that happened in our kid's school. And, and he will stop me in my tracks. Wait, do I need to hear this? Is this Lashon Hara? Is it, how do you know it's true? He said this to me today. He said, we were talking about, I don't know. It was like, there's a conference of rabbis going on. And I don't remember what it was, but I was saying like, oh, so-and-so, well, she has it easy. And he's like, how do you know? How do you know? And he, he just like keeps stopping it in the tracks. And it's very humbling. And if I didn't love him so much or believe that this is really a very high elevated way to live, I'd be upset. But you have to understand she's coming from a good place. It's hard. It's hard. Oh, sometimes they, they have to be so right, you know? It's like, oh. yeah. And just to feed off of both the Yuri's and Steph, when I at least try and reconcile with what I think. Situation, so like I am. So there is space. It's it's complex, but there is space to have one place to to turn to. There is that idea, and sometimes it's a therapist. A therapist doesn't have any. Well, it's it, or or um, bias. Right, and they usually don't know the person. Yeah. So that would be a very ideal situation, or to speak it through. Like sometimes I will discuss a situation with my rabbi or my rabbitin, and I won't. They don't know who I'm talking about. I won't give them the details. I won't say the name. I'll say you don't know who this person is. Let me tell you what happened. To get a perspective, we are human beings. We need assistance. We need help. So there is space for that. I'm wondering with your husband. If that's the, the, the case and you need to get it off your chest, I'm wondering if you could slightly change the details or not tell, tell him who you're talking about. What, is that a possibility? Because then that would be totally fine. He knows all the players. I know, so hard. The, theoretically speaking, my best friend, yeah. I, I also think you have to know who you're dealing with. Right. I mean, there are, there are you know, a 40-year friendship you can take with them. Right, right, right. Um, if people don't know you and there isn't a relationship there, you have to right. have a lot of different things. Right, totally. So I, I think that's judge the yeah. situation. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, there's no, there's no, but that's, yeah, there's no, like, one size fits all. It's really, really, but I, as Deborah says, or Laura, you were saying, like, the more you, like, kind of, like, these concepts are, you're learning. If you're not learning, you're not following. 
by the way. Like if you are not constantly learning the laws of relationships and speech, we are, we're, we're losing the game. So just learning it, just reading it. I mean, these books, these are like a lesson. Like if you're like, it, it just heightens, if you're aware, if you're like, okay, two minutes a day, call a friend, read a page. That is a recipe for success Ooh. in this era. Wow. Wow. So, Joy, so could we could we actually dig into this a little bit? Okay. What you're seeing something? You just hit something on the head. You're seeing that is it your aunt or I don't know. We don't. None of us know your aunt. <laughs> this person. <laughs> this person is feeling so insecure about herself that she feels she needs to push someone down in order to build herself up. I wonder, and maybe we could brainstorm together. What could we do to, 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 she needs something. There's a lacking in her, there's, there's a need. What could we do to fill that need in a different way? Right, right, right. It's so hard, and but you should just know you're you're in charge of yourself. You don't you're not you don't have to say, oh, I was dragged into it. Yeah. As much as you love your aunt, yeah. So that's that's it, and figuring out how to stop it and how to fill that need. I love you anyways, and I don't want to hear about her. Well, let me hear about you. What do you need, right? So so the question that I want to ask is, why do people gossip? We we all do this. As much as we know it's so bad, this is, this is, and it's, it's actually, I mean, it's considered one of the worst that they wrote, right? Like, okay, so I think you're hitting, okay, connection. It goes back to like this human need, okay? Low self-esteem, it's definitely coming from a low place. Yeah. There's, if, if, if someone is good with who they are, they're not talking about other people, exactly. well, okay? I Wow. How old is she? Wow. That's amazing. Wow. Yeah. And after she kept that up all the years. Is there something else that we can? Could... Okay. Oh, I don't know. Sometimes I think a lot of the gossip is like, I want to be the social yeah. queen of the moment. Ooh. I have the, the, the dirt. Well, I have.
that we usually say to ourselves that to rationalize our gossiping but it was true right no i know that's and as she's rationalizing that right okay there's there's give me some others there's um well everyone knows about it if everyone knows about it and you say it is that still it's gossip it's still gossip even if it was on the front page of the newspaper, you speaking it is you gossiping. But what other things do we, do we go through our minds? Um, if, oh, here's another one, here's a good one. If she was sitting right here in front of me, I would say the same thing. <laughs> really? Okay. That would still be gossip, even if she was sitting straight in front of you. You know that, isn't that interesting? That would be considered gossip. If you share something to a group of people with her right there, you are still gossiping about her in front of her. You're embarrassing her. Even worse. And it's so bad, right? Okay. Yeah, Marcy. Yeah. So here's here's a, a few questions that you could just check check in with yourself is, is it true? Is it kind? Is it necessary? And you said that word, you said necessary. Like, you, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, right. Right, so, so true, so true. Here, wait, I had one more quote. Okay, okay, take this one down if you like a good quote. When people clean up their speech, they clean up their lives. When people clean up their speech, they clean up their lives. Their lives. So that is it true? Is it kind? Is it necessary? I mean, there's so much drama that comes from gossip. It never ends well. You know, do you, I'm sure you guys all know the, the folk tale, the 19th century folk tale about the person that goes to the master and says, will you forgive me? He slandered him, he, slandered, he was a big gossiper in the town. And he says, I'll forgive you as soon as you go and get a feather pillow and bring it here to me. Ooh. So he goes and he gets this feather pillow and he says, do you forgive me now? He says, no, I want you to now slash the pillow open and let the feathers go out in the wind. So he goes and he does that and he says, do you forgive me now? collect the feathers, then I'll forgive you for the gossip that you spread about me. And it's a very powerful parable because gossip is like that. It's like a, it's a feathers in a wind. You can never collect the damage that was spread. And especially nowadays in our generation, it's not only the, the spoken word, it's one click on a button. It's one send on an email. CCing uh, who knows how many people. I mean, how quickly can our gossip spread and cause far reaching damage? We're in a generation like no other gossip is so much more prevalent. Social media, everything. It's just click, one click, and it's to the other end of the world. It's like those feathers. You can never bring back the feathers. You can never fix that damage. So I see that we have just a few more minutes, and there's kind of there's a few things I want to do. I want to speak about silence. You, you brought this up, Deborah. It's a really, right? 
discover you did. It was very, very intelligent. Okay. So there is, as I said before, there's nothing more powerful than being silent. So I'm going to share a, a story, true story that happened years ago and is very well known. It could be, you, you've heard this story. It's worth repeating. The story goes like this. There was a couple that were married for 22 years and were childless. They went to every doctor, every rabbi for blessings. I'm sure you know the story, Chava, right? Very well-known story. True story that happened. Rabbi Chaim Kanievsky, he's one of the giants in Israel, in Bnei Brak. They went to him for a blessing and he told them an odd thing. He said, find someone that is being embarrassed, that holds back saying anything, that takes in the pain, takes in the suffering, doesn't fire back an answer, just takes it in and stays silent in the moment and go to that person. That person has greatness and that's the person that you need to get the blessing from. So this couple's like, they were, I mean, 22 years. They were like, please, like they wanted a child so badly. They, they heard his words, they go on their way. They're searching and after years pass by, they never found that, that certain case scenario. Like, where do you see that? If you see someone being screamed at in the supermarket, 99.9 .9 or 100% of the time, that person has to say, who are, who are you to tell me off, right? They'll, they'll go right back at it. It's like a power battle, it's a war. Someone screamed at you, you're going to say your two cents. So years pass and this couple, they're getting older and they're almost giving up all hope. They're, in a, they're at a wedding in B'nai Brak and they see the scenario before their eyes where someone is embarrassing this lady. There's a lady there that's been screamed at and she doesn't even understand the whole scenario, but she runs to her and she says, she whispers in her ears, please hold back or free from saying anything. You know you're embarrassed, just don't say a word. And the lady just like sits there and takes it all in. And eventually the person that's screaming at her is like, well, I'm giving up, you know, like I'll move on to the next person because there's no, there's no fight here. It's, this is really not working for me. So the person leaves and this lady says, I have been barren for, I think it was like 27 years at the time. She said, and I have been waiting for this moment. I want to have, a blessing from you. And, the, and she gets a blessing. And within a year, this is a true story. It's like, you know, happy endings, but it's a real true story. Um, after 27 years of being childless, this couple has a baby. And um, this Rabbi Chaim Kanievsky was the Sanda, right? He mm -hmm. held the baby at the Brit. And, and this is a true thing. So there's something very, very, very powerful in this idea of staying silent. So we could think about this in the way that God created us, okay? Look at our face, our panim, right? Our panim, right? Panim is the word for face. It's also the word for panim, inside, okay? There's a lot of spiritual, you know, parallels to the way God created us and, and, and like who we really are. We have two eyes, we have two ears, we have two nostrils, but we have one mouth. And that one mouth has two gates to it. It has teeth, the teeth that are gates to the tongue. The tongue is the lashon, shmirat halashon, guarding your tongue, because that's what we, that's what does all the damage, it's the tongue. Gates, we have the teeth and the lips. So we have double protection, and God is showing us take it in, see it, observe, hear it, take it all in, but hold back your speech. You should take in double, triple, quadruple as much as you put out there. Now, here's a scary concept. We have X amount of words. When we finish our words, we finish our words. You have ever seen anyone with suffering with all types of illnesses? I have a friend that's suffering with Um, lung cancer, fourth stage right now. She has a very hard time speaking. And every time I speak to her, I, I, I just I think about this, right? You, have you ever seen people with tracheas, right? And they're, they're speaking through machines, right? It's heartbreaking. But our sages tell us that we have a certain amount of words and we're not supposed to be talking, talking, talking. 
We're supposed to be taking it in. We're supposed to be listening and we're supposed to be using our mouth for good. One more thing that we didn't yet discuss when I said, what are the prohibitions about our, about our we got Rechilut, right? Being a tail bearer. Um, we got some other great ones like about lying and about um, judging. And I can't remember you said one, flattery, flattery, all those stuff. So those, there's a lot of that. There was one that we did not mention that is so important. In Hebrew, we call it nivel het, which means, I don't even know how to describe that. Does anyone know how to say that? It's speaking disrespectfully. It's swearing. It's using our mouth for profanity. Okay, think about it. This mouth, this one mouth is like the powerhouse of our body. And we use it to connect to God. This is how we pray. This is how we make a blessing. This is how we talk. Think about it. Let's go a little deeper. The mouth, Deborah, y'all looking at I wish you guys could see on the screen. Deborah's mask is on her face right now. <laughs> I was not judging, but we have to be careful because this is the same mouth that we kiss with, that we talk to people, that we connect to people. How do we connect to God? It's not our mouth. So let's think about this mouth for a minute and we're going to end up and there's lots to talk about, but this, this has been a great conversation and so much good feedback and input. And I'd love to open it up for a few questions um, at the end as well. The mouth is the most powerful part of our body because it is the part that separates us from what? From an animal. There's two things that we have on top of an animal. Well, there's more than two, but one is our mouth or communication, right? They have their own way of communication, but they don't speak in the way that we do and our free will. So if I could share like a quick story, quick, quick story. I know, are you guys rushing for time or do I have a few minutes? A few minutes, okay. So this is um, and the momentum trip. So some of you might've heard the story. It's the story of the king that has his two jesters that are coming up with three to outdo. One is trying to outdo the next. And I have such a good, you know, gadget or gimmick or whatever, I oh watch. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get like the king's, you know, royal treatments, whatever it is. So the story goes like this. One jester has the best thing planned. He has trained his cat to hold a tray, to stand on his hind leg, and to go and walk and serve the king coffee, the creamer and sugar cubes and everything. So it's like a whole thing. So both of the jesters are coming up with these great ideas and this, this jester the royal carpet is spread out. The trunk is up back. And you can imagine this exciting moment. And out goes this cat. And the jester is watching from behind the curtains. Do it, do it. We've been training for so many months. And he's going on his hind legs. He's almost at the king. He's three minutes. And it's all, it's like, what, this incredible moment. And the other jester from his pocket, one mouth. Chaos! Everything spills and splats all over the king and the queen, and it's total chaos. And the gesture's thinking, oh, I want to be the king. He supported him forevermore, but he couldn't overcome his instinct because he's a cat, right? And the message to us as people, as elevated beings, is we don't have to drop the tray. We could choose. We have free will. We have power. We could hold back for a minute. We could be in silence for a minute. We don't always have to have the wrong answer. We don't always have to shoot off our mouth. The mouth that is shot off, Lori Platnick says, whatever comes out, it's like a bullet that is fired. You could never get that bullet back in the gun. Once it's fired, once those feathers are spread, there's no way of getting it back. So very important to understand that speech is so important because it is what elevates us as people that are souls. We're not a body with a soul. We're a soul with a body. We're elevated and it all comes from here. This is the power center of a human being. Yes. Um, 
Okay. Javier Brodkin. Nurtured heart. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, do you want to share just for a minute? Because yeah. it's called the nurtured heart approach. And if you're if you're interested for your own children or if you're in education, it is a very powerful. Right. Right. Oh wow. Hmm. Right. Mm. Right. Lucky kids. Mm. Okay. Mm. Wow. Wow. I love it. Thank you for reminding me about that. That's no, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's pretty. It's pretty new. Yeah, the nurtured heart approach. Yeah. Sure. Oh yeah, I actually brought this for you guys to show this, okay. Okay, so I think we're gonna close the class now with one or two announcements. So one, thank you for reminding me, I probably would have forgotten. I got this in the mail. This is a program, it's called Clean Free Speech Illinois. And you could sign up online and every day you get Yeah, the JUF. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's a beautiful project. Actually, it's actually my former boss from Denver, Colorado, created this whole project. So I'm really shopping not this because he had this dream years ago. He started it in Denver and it spread to many Jewish communities. And I, I don't know if this is the first or the second time that it's here in Chicago, but they're rocking it. They're doing such a great job. So anyone could look at this, you could see the content. They have different presenters giving the content over. So every day you'll get an email to your inbox. I haven't yet seen that. that. Yeah, yeah. So beautiful, such a beautiful initiative. So I'd like to end with a little prayer from our dear friend Rookie's book, uh, Conversations with God. There is a prayer here to speak positively to others. So I think I'm going to read it. If it's okay with you, I'm going to read it in English. Master of the universe. So everyone just close your eyes and like, I'm saying this prayer. You will say amen. This will be all of our prayer as we end this very powerful session. Here we go. Master of the universe, may it be your will, compassionate God, that you give me privilege today and every day to hold my tongue from speaking gossip and slander and to believe those words when they are spoken to me. May I succeed in being careful even when speaking about one individual and of course when speaking of the entire Jewish people or a segment of them. Even more so, help me refrain from complaining about your ways, God. May I succeed in being careful to stay away from lies, false flattery, stupidities, fighting, anger, arrogance, verbal abuse, embarrassing others, and all other forms of speech that you don't allow. Give me the privilege to use my power of speech for positivity, to build people and create positive change, whether for body or soul. May all my deeds be for a positive purpose. Give me the privilege to use my power of speech for positivity to build people and create positive change, whether for body or soul. Amen. Okay. And thank you so much. If anyone has questions, I'm happy to 
Yes, Hana. I think so, yeah. 